I'm Jim Richards. I want to welcome you to Cyber Church, where you're going to church with people all over the world. I tell you, I'm just getting incredible letters of testimonies from people whose lives are being transformed as a result of participating in these weekly cyber church messages. You know, uh, it's the, always been my personal goal. It's the goal of Impact Ministries to make disciples. You know, we are not just trying to get you to watch these broadcasts that come out every single week. Uh, but what we're trying to do is to, equi to equip you so that the real truth is you don't need me, you don't need these broadcasts. And when, as we face incredible challenges as the world dives deeper into darkness, you are equipped to handle those challenges. You're not, you know, you're not going to be like the five foolish virgins who, when the time of press, pressure and desperation came, you're going to have to run and see if you can go get filled with the Holy Spirit and get the power of God working in you because you're going to have the life, the power, and the wisdom of God working in you. So today I'm starting a brand new series. And much of this stuff I've talked about for decades, but a very I don't think I've ever put much of this in, in one place. And I'm telling you, it's going to be kind of an outside of the box series, but I believe it's going to help you. I believe it's going to help you face uh, what's going on in the world today, but also what's coming in the world today. Uh, this message today and this new series that I'll be releasing is called Ancient Mysteries. Now, you know, if you've ever watched the History Channel, for those of you in the United States, uh, you know, that are able to get the History Channel, then uh, you, you've, you've seen all of the, uh, the ancient mysteries and the ancient aliens and all this kind of stuff. And they, you know, they travel all over the globe and they, they, look, at, uh, they look at megalithic structures that, that were built thousands of years ago. They look at the pyramids. You know, they look at all of these ancient uh, remnants left behind and they try to figure out how they got here. Who put them here? Well, of course, uh, they're never going to go to the Bible, even though the Bible reveals all of this. They're never going to go to the Bible and say, oh, God showed us how all of this got here. God showed us who did this. God showed us where, you know, you, you know, who built these structures that no human being could have built and that we still can't even build today with the with the earth moving equipment and the computer technology that we have. And so, you know, what they're reaching for is they're always going to say that um, aliens came from other planets and actually they aliens are the ones that did all this. They're the ones that created the human race and da 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 da. You know, uh, I started warning people a couple of years ago and actually just a few months ago. You know, I, I said, what do you guys think are the is going to be the next big wave of deception that's going to be coming down the pike? And uh, uh, people, you know, gave me lists of things that, and they were right. You know, many many of them were. Yeah, this is this is going to be coming. But uh, what I have warned of is one of the great deception that is coming, and this is a planned deception. Is the idea that there are aliens, uh, and those aliens, uh, I'm talking about extraterrestrial aliens. Those aliens actually are. The, the creators of the human race. And what's interesting is I don't even know, probably 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, um, in one of the globalist meetings at the UN, when they were talking about how they will control the nations of the world once they get a one, once they're able to get a, a one world government going, because they have to keep people afraid. They can only control people who are afraid. And so they talked about uh, releasing pandemics into the world, or at least fake pandemics. Uh, they talked about, uh, uh, you know, causing financial disasters all over the world. But one of the things that they talked about was, was creating the illusion uh, of extraterrestrial beings that were threatening our existence here on planet Earth. Now, the, the reasoning behind this is... is an, we not only need people afraid, but we need a threat that is so monumental that they realize they need the government to protect them from these threats. So, so get ready, guys. You're going to hear stuff 
that is going to make you believe, if you're willing to believe it, that in fact there are ex extraterrestrial aliens and, uh, and that they have proof of it. And, uh, but I want to show you what the Bible says because that, that's, that's where you have to go back to everything. If you are a believer, then everything that you hear, well, let me, let me qualify that a little bit more. If you are a believer who has actually made Jesus Lord, then every single thing in the world, everything you believe about life, everything you believe about yourself, everything you believe about aliens, angels, demons, whatever, everything has to go back to the Word of God. And so, Unfortunately, religion has done everything it can to make you, number one, not be able to understand the Word of God. We've got centuries of bad translations uh, in the Word of God. Also, uh, we have been kind of alienated from what we call the Old Testament uh, because the Old Testament is where we understand the character and the nature of God, but it's also where we understand the history and the science behind the creation of the world and the creation of all things. And so religion does not really want you to uh, trust God. You know, there, there are two kingdoms that exist side by side on planet Earth, and it's the kingdoms of this world, or the world system as I usually call it, and then there is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, uh, they are within the same realm, but the phrase kingdom of God and the phrase kingdom of heaven actually explain two different dimensions of what we have when we live surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. And, and we're not going to, we're not going to go in, into all of that right now, but, uh, in the kingdoms of this world, religion, according to the scripture is rooted in the kingdoms of this world. And so religion is designed to g make you understand God or maybe misunderstand God based on using what really is false science, based on using intellectual your intellectual capabilities and presenting a concept of God that is not based on Scripture. Sort of looks like it's based on Scripture, but it's really not. And so many people are having their faith destroyed. They're having their lives taken apart. They're losing confidence in God. They've lost confidence in the Word of God. Because what happens is when we build our faith on something that is not actually rooted in Scripture, rooted in the true identity of God, then what happens is it sounds good, it's pious, it's religious, you know, we worship, we sing, we do all of these kinds of things, but we can never actually have biblical faith because biblical faith is a response of trust that you give to uh, what God says and what God reveals about himself. So if you're, if you're trying to have faith based on what your denomination believes, if you're trying to have faith based on what your family believes, if you're trying to have faith based on some mixture of false science in the scripture, then the real truth is your faith is pretty much always or nearly always going to fail because it's not rooted in uh the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, and what that reveals to us about God. So one of the things I just want to start out this series by saying, this week is an introduction. So like all introductions, this is what helps you get ready for where we're going to go. And introductions are important because if you don't get the introduction, you will miss the point. So one of the things I want to say right off the bat, everything that's written in the Bible is written for a purpose. And everything that is left out of the Bible is left out of the Bible for a purpose. In other words, you know, there, there are some things that just doesn't matter what you know about them. But uh, there are other things that you need to know so that you cannot be deceived and so that you can have a powerful uh, biblically based faith that is wrapped around the true identity of God. So, so. I call this ancient mysteries because one of the great places that we are being deceived is the false science 
that is coming about and that has been coming about for centuries based on ancient mysteries. And people look at these ancient mysteries and they don't consider what the Bible says. Now, here's something people do not understand. You know, I'm not a Bible thumper in a religious or legalistic way. I have been studying the Word of God for 50 years. I've been studying medicine for, uh, for about 35 years. Uh, and everything that I learn in the scientific world, I always take it to the Word of God. And what I have found is this, is science, real science, and the Word of God very rarely are in disagreement. The only time they're in disagreement is when religious people have dogmatic concepts that are not really based on the Bible, they're based on their view of the Bible, or when scientists have dogmatic concepts that are not really rooted in proven reality. Now, so much of what science teaches us about the ancient world actually is just a guess. I mean, it is just a wild guess. And I won't go into all of it now. Maybe I'll get to it in this series. But the way science works and the way scientific exploration works uh, is that you have to be able to have concrete uh, information. You, you have to see that that information and how you're interpreting it uh, uh, is... Uh, is can be duplicated and so many things about creation many of the things like say about about the pyramids many of the things about megalithic structures many of the things that we see from the ancient world we can't explain we have no clue uh, other than the scripture and other than the historical accounts of those people in those nations so so we have no, we have those two things we have the bible and we have the historical uh, account of the people who live in those nations and sadly, what we call science, when it does not want to believe the historical accounts of the people in those nations and those places, and, and it definitely doesn't want to believe what the Bible teaches, then, then they have to start creating theories. Now, a theory is just a guess, and many times, a theory is a prejudiced guess because they come up with the theory because they have something they want to prove or something they want to disprove. They have something that they don't believe and they will, they will twist facts and information and research to make it say what they want it to say. But I am telling you, everything you need to know about the ancient world is there. And you may be saying, why is this even important to us? I mean, we got, we're dealing with all this crazy stuff in the whole world. Why should we be concerned about the ancient world? I'll tell you why. It's because if you do not understand what happened in the ancient world, if you do not understand how the earth was created if you don't understand where if you don't understand where the pyramids came from and and some of these megalithic structures and some of the scientific research that was actually done thousands of years ago then uh, the problem is you have no basis for interpreting what's happening in the world today you know the wisest man in the world so there's nothing new under the sun you know, I was uh, I was talking to uh, one of my daughters the other day, and, and we both enjoy watching uh, documentaries about historical documentaries, and uh, and, and even watching uh, movies that are you know that are loosely based on history. Because if you understand what has come before, you will understand what comes again and not only that you will understand how it comes and in this world system you will understand the deceit the lies that are being used to uh, manipulate you and to to turn your heart from god so you know here are questions that we need to know the answers for example who built the pyramids and how did they build them who built the megalithic structures that we find all over the world? You know, um, uh, one of the largest carved stones in the world weighs 1,200 tons, 1,200 tons. And for, for a stone like that to be carved out and moved 
requires capabilities that we don't even have today in this modern world. And so it's amazing how we come up with theories to, to explain this and deliberately ignore what the Word of God reveals because we, we, here's the thing you have to understand about what's called science today. The Bible warns you against false science. False science has as its goal the disproving of the Word of God. Now, we're going to get into this in ways that, that are pretty, going to be pretty shocking, but I just want you to hold on to that thought. Let me just mention this. Just take a second to mention this. I'll be releasing a series uh, probably next week that uh, will go into much greater detail. You know, in these cyber church broadcasts, not everybody wants to go deep, deep, deep into the detail. Not everybody has the time because, uh, you know, in this in this broadcast, you know, we might have we might have three or three hours or so of of teaching and information, but in the series there there will be between six and eight hours of teaching because many people want to dive deeper. They want they're more interested in, in being disciples, they're more interested in how how do we apply this to daily life. <clears throat> and so we provide the cyber church every week for free and we've been doing this for decades as a matter of fact many many times people just contact us and they say i just can't believe how much free information you have on your line you know i have over 200 video series on our website impactministries.com or drjimrichards.com uh, and and those 200 series uh, probably have about a thousand individual messages in them, and they are for free because we're putting this out there to help you. But for those who want to dive deeper, those who want to take a closer look at some of the stuff, we create these series. Now, we use finances from these series to do ministry all over the world, and I just want you to understand this. Uh, this way, we're not always having to beg for money. And so uh, 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 we... Are involved in reaching one billion people and developing one billion disciples around the world. So whenever you purchase these series, you're not only making an investment in yourself, you're making an investment in the world for the kingdom of God. So let's jump, let's just jump back into this. So when you look at the pyramids and you look at the megalithic structures, of course, one of the questions that you have to ask yourself is not is not just who built these structures. Uh, but also, why? What is their purpose? And what you'll find is from a biblical perspective, their purpose is pretty, pretty amazing and pretty sinister. You know, uh, one of the things I've noticed in, in my life, you know, I'm, I'm just, a few, just a few months away from being 70 years old. And, uh, you know, I've read and studied it really since childhood. You know, when I went to school, when I went into the first grade because of my sister teaching me, I could read, write, add, subtract, multiply, divide. And I, I didn't learn a single thing in school at all until I was in about the fourth grade. And even what I started learning in the fourth grade, uh, it was more explanation about all of those things. So because I learned how to read early, because I learned how to do these things early, and again, I, I have my sister to thank for that. She was just uh, an incredibly positive influence in my life in a really wicked and violent world that we that uh, that she and I and my brother you know lived in. But uh, but there there were purposes that were behind the building of these, of these pyramids and of these ziggurats, uh, uh, or zaggurats, I forgot how you pronounce them. By the way, I just, I just got over COVID, so I actually I'm going through that thing that a lot of people who have, have had COVID face, that is you, you, you know what you want to say, but you can't remember how to say the word, or you can't, you know, it's kind of, it, it, it's, it's like dementia, but it's not. You just forget words, but I'm, I'm a lot better than I was, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So anyhow, so if I mispronounce a word or forget a word or kind of stumble here or there, just kind of give me some kindness and, and, and flow with me. But uh, uh, so again, one of the questions is, okay, so how were the ancients able to calculate the positions of the stars and the constellations without computers and telescopes. You know, it's really interesting. I was reading from a medical doctor who, who, was, a, who was a pioneer in, uh, 
uh, and treating people's eyes. I think he was one of the guys that's got patents in some of the earliest LASIK surgeries and this kind of stuff. The guy's, the guy's brilliant. And he was talking about how that, uh, how that it wasn't until the Hubble telescope went into outer space, which when was that? In the 60s, I can't remember if it was in the 60s or early 70s, that we were able to measure the different or the distance between the planets in our solar system. But the amazing thing was, once we got these measurements, it was discovered that the measurements of the distance between the planets was accurately recorded on an, obel on an obelisk in ancient Egypt. Now, how in the world could they have figured out the distance between the planets? Many of, the, of these pyramids were built around the world, and they were, they were actually built to, to be in line one with another uh, on, uh, on the latitudes that, uh, that are demarcations for the whole world. How did they do that? They didn't, they didn't have the tools we have. And according to what history tells us, which is not accurate, you know, uh, how, how did they even get to those parts of the world? Because we were told that uh, n nobody had reached those parts of the world back in those times. So how did they know scientific facts thousands of years before modern science? Now, to me, when modern science comes out and they say they definitively know something, and, uh, and then, you know, a few years later, we found out, oh, no, wait a minute. Somebody three or 4,000 years ago knew that. They knew that before you ever knew it. So how, why do you think you're qualified to discount the knowledge and sometimes the wisdom of, uh, of people who lived uh, thousands of years ago that discovered this information or knew this information without uh, computers and without modern science? So, you know, of course, one of the things that happens here, this flies in the face of everything we're taught about the human race. This destroys the concept of, uh, of, of Darwinian evolution because Darwinian evolution basically said, you know, that we were a single cell amoeba that developed into something that one day crawled up on the land, you know, that became a tadpole, one day crawled up on the land, grew some legs, and that, and that we have very slowly and progressively, because of nature, uh, evolved into the intelligent human beings that we are now. Well, none of that can be true if they had more accurate science 4,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago than we actually have today. And they had that science and they had that knowledge based on uh, uh, their intellect, not based on uh, what computers were able to calculate or what we could see with telescopes looking into outer space. So this really should make every person listening to this say, well, wait a minute, maybe I need to stop accepting what is called science just because somebody says it out there. You know, I was reading a book one time uh, written by a scientist and uh, you know, he said one of, the, one of the great mistakes that we make is that we think all scientists or all scientists are scientific in their research. They're not. And uh, this particular scientist talked about the fact that the majority of scientists and uh, in, in the many different fields start out with an opinion and their research is designed to support that opinion. And uh, they discard, hide, cover up, or lie about research that disproves their theories. So, you know, again, we've got pyramids, we've got temples, we've got other megalithic structures that were erected thousands of years ago more precisely, more accurately than we can do today. And so until we can answer some of these questions, the truth is it will be very easy for us to be seduced. See, the most important question that I ask when I see these things in the Bible and I see the whole world system struggling over this, I ask this, why do governments, scientists, educational institutions, why do all of these organizations, institutions, and individuals put so much effort into hiding the truth? Now, for some of you, your head's going to blow up when I tell you this, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at this uh, more deeply. Uh, very soon, but uh, 
the reality of it is, for nearly a century, uh, the the um, fossils that were found that disproved the Darwinian theory were actually hidden in what is now called the Smithsonian. And according to the information that I have, which is readily available, uh, uh, that was done deliberately, and it was only discovered about 80 years ago. So the reality is there is not one fossil record that actually proves the Darwinian theory of evolution. Yet, there are thousands of fossil records that prove just the opposite. But we will never hear those because there is a world system and that world system is functioning for a primary purpose. And that primary purpose is to alienate you from God, to destroy your faith so that the leaders, the elites of this world can take control of all of the earth's resources, take control of all human beings on the face of the earth. You do realize that in just, in just a, a matter of months, uh, people around the world will be uh, tracked and thanks to 5G and thanks to the global satellite network that is now being developed, there will not be any place on earth that a human being can go where they are not tracked, where, 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 where you can't keep up with them. And then ultimately there will be absolute control over every dollar you spend. Now if you're reading, and this is not coming out of science fiction teaching, this is not coming out of religious teaching, this is not coming out of fanatical teaching, this is coming out of the scientific community today, the governments of the world, and they're not revealing their nefarious purposes for wanting to do this. They're saying this is going to happen for our good. And I want to equip you to understand everything that's coming uh, uh, by looking at what happened in the past. I, but I also, more than that, I'm going to bring you to the place where you understand how you can live in absolute victory, even though all of these horrible things are going on in the world. And all this comes, number one, understanding what happened in the past. Number two, knowing who God is. Number three, understanding what you have through the finished work of the Lord Jesus. So be ready, strap on your seatbelts. We're going to be doing this every week for several weeks. Be sure and share this with your friends. Invite people uh, to listen to this, send links to it, because I'm telling you something, we want to equip and help and stabilize every believer in the world, and we want to reach people who are not yet believers. So join me every single week. Go to my webpage, uh, go to Dr. Jim Richards on my Facebook page, share and become a part of this community, and we will change the way the world sees God. <music>